What's good, YouTube? Uh, today's video is going to be about how to tell if your coworker or your classmate likes you. Now, recently I got a question. Somebody asked me that. <laughs> they said, how to tell if your coworker or your classmate likes you. But before I start, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't hit the notification bell, if you're not getting notified of my new content, please hit the notification bell. Please subscribe. Sure. Too many people watching my content who haven't even subscribed to my channel and share my content if you think it's helpful. Sometimes when you work with a person or you're in school with them, um, you end up encountering them. A lot of times people get into these flirty exchanges where a guy might say, you know, I'm feeling you, or he might allude to liking you, or he might joke about or flirt uh, his way into saying, well, maybe I have a crush on you or something like that. People can say anything, right? In general, people's words should really just second their actions, right? You should look to their words for confirmation of what you think you've observed in their actions, right? Not the other way around. Um, so a lot of times a guy will tell a woman, you know, I'm feeling you or some bullshit like that. And it's, it's hogwash, right? And you know it's hogwash because if this person encounters you a lot, if they're where you are on a regular basis, but you're not necessarily seeing them, they're not in your space, they're not around you, they're not in your immediate area, then you know it's hogwash. Most of the time when a person likes you, they find a way to be around you, find a way to be in your line of sight and find a way to keep you in theirs, right? Proximity matters when you really like a person. Think about how you are when you're around a guy that you like or when you when you work with, with a person that you like or you're um, going to school with a person that you like or you're in a social group, wherever you might encounter someone on a regular basis that you like, you find a way to be around them, to be in their area, to be in their presence, right? You put your best stuff on. You obviously do your best to get dressed and look your best. But once you feel confident in how you present, you want to be seen and noticed by them. There's nothing worse than being at your best, looking your best, going out of your way, get your hair done, get your uh, your nails done, you know, have the nicest uh, outfit on and then not be seen by people that you respect or admire or want to like you. I can't stand when I get dressed and just go to the mall or any nice place where I want people to see how good I'm looking and I don't see anybody I know but I'm looking raggedy, my hair's not cut. I got a $3 t-shirt on and, and somebody pump, jumps out, oh, you're a kid, pig. I hate that shit. Right, so just like you hate uh, being seen when you look crazy, you hate being missed when you look your best. And most of the time, if you're around someone that you like, you're going to make sure you look your best. And so when that happens, you want to be around them. You want to be seen by them. You want to be heard by them. You want to be in their line of sight and you want to be in proximity. Think about yourself for a minute. If you like a guy, aren't you really trying to be in the same space as him once you feel like you're looking good? Aren't you really trying to be in the same environment when you know you are presenting well and you're at your best? You're trying to be noticed. You're trying to stand out. But to do that, you have to be in the same room or the same environment, even if that's not your assignment, even if you have no reason to be on that side of the room or that side of the building. We naturally gravitate to and are magnetized to our crushes, to the people we internally have given value to, regardless of the attraction, regardless of the game we might want to play when we really kind of like somebody, like genuinely have a curiosity about them and a romantic inkling. We stay next to them and we stay around them. We stay in their line of sight. And if we can't do that, we just stay in an area where we can feel them or impact their day and they can impact ours. We're trying to bump into them. We're trying to cause more interactions. We're secretly hoping for more opportunities to talk to them, more opportunities to connect, more opportunities to build a rapport and get close. So if you wanna know if a guy at your job or at your school or any social group you might be, anywhere you might be seeing a person on a regular basis, if you wanna know if a guy in this type of environment likes you, he's generally around even when he doesn't have to be. There's no real need for him to be. He's not assigned to be around you. He's popping up asking you for help or asking for pencils or asking for this or suggesting this or trying to help in ways that he doesn't have to because he's really not even supposed to be over there or he's not obligated to. He obligates himself to be around you because he wants to be noticed. In general, he has to find an excuse to do that. So it's always like, hey, can I borrow a pencil? Hey, did you do your homework? Hey, what was that assignment? Hey, you hear what the boss said? Did you understand what happened in that meeting? 
there's always some reason he's trying to contact you or trying to talk to you about something. There's always some reason he's trying to find himself next to you to work or to help. You may notice a lot that his back is turned toward you, but he's very close, especially when you're conversing with other people. It's because he's trying to listen in on that conversation. <laughs> he wants to be a part of the conversations, even the ones that he's not invited to. He's hoping to get some kind of energy from you so that he can immediately turn to you in response to what you say. He's hoping to be invited into the conversation that he's not yet a part of. So he stays in the area just in case there's an invite thrown. And again, when a person likes you like internally, it's not just about them playing a game or, or conquering you or something like that. They put themselves through this. We all have our imaginations run wild when we like somebody. We all want to feel that person's energy. So even a player who genuinely likes you and might want to play with other women who values you a little bit more can do this. I remember like in a coworker when I was 18, I worked at a mail sorting facility and we would be working our ass off uh, sorting out his mail, thousands and thousands of pieces of mail. And um, once I got done with my, uh, my place or my position, my assignment for the night, I could help anywhere, right? There were about 30 different spots that you could go help. I would immediately go seek out her area, right? I'd help someone next to her if I wasn't helping her. I would help someone right beside her if I wasn't helping her. I would help her if she made eye contact with me or looked up with me. I'm like, yo, you need help? I was always available and I was in an immediate area just because I wanted to feel myself around her. And I didn't have a problem with women at this point. At this point, I, I could really date who I wanted to date, I felt like. But because something was special about her and I didn't have access to her, I needed to be around her at work. Partially because I just wanted to wait for an opportunity to talk to her and things of that nature, but also because I was trying to crowd her so other men wouldn't jump into the uh, mix before I was able to make my move. So if someone's unnecessarily close to you or always around you or always in a vicinity and they don't really have to be, they're not assigned to it, they're not obligated, but they are, whether or not they're actually looking at you or talking to you or interacting with you isn't really important. To them, it's about being around you and feeling your presence, smelling you, feeling your energy. We all naturally do this. We want to be by the people we have a crush on, hoping to make more opportunities to connect, especially if you have an unrealized uh, type of romance where you haven't been able to express yourself or you haven't had phone conversations, you haven't exchanged numbers, you haven't been able to flirt, you haven't been able to really establish yourself to this person. People linger and they linger hard when they like a person, especially males, because we want to be noticed. We want to be seen, but we also don't want to simp. We want to make sure that it happens organically. And so because we want to come onto a woman organically, right, to not give her too much leverage, to not to not make ourselves feel or seem like we're on her too hard. So because a lot of times a man doesn't want to come on to you and put his put himself out there like that, he wants to be seen being the most manly, the most handsome, the most dominant, the most competent, the most capable person around you. So he's trying to give you a reason and a, and a space and an, and an opportunity to observe him being a man, right? Macho or masculine or, or helpful or tough or whatever. So if there's somebody who always seems to be hovering and lingering around you for no reason at all, or, or and they constantly find themselves next to you, even though there's no valid reason that they should even be next to you or in your vicinity at work or at school or whatever social group you might go to on a very regular basis, it's definitely because they feel a pull towards you and they're magnetized towards you and they're trying to figure out how to get noticed by you without actually coming on to you. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, follow me at KFA24 on Instagram. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell if you haven't hit the notification bell yet to get notified when I, when I drop new content. Thanks for watching. I'll get with y'all later.